Dividend incomes to be slashed. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I want to have a look at this article from the ABC discussing, well, hundreds of thousands of Australians are going to have their income from dividends slashed. And remember, earlier today, well, just this morning, we looked at an article discussing, should you invest in property or shares? And, well, the author of the article was a proponent of shares over property, and I could see why. If we look at shares, look at the stock market, the ASX 200 is sitting at 6126 at the moment, so 6126 It's been trading sideways for some time, pretty much slowly creeping up. But we're in financial reporting season now, and one after the other seems to be either paying lower dividends or no dividends, giving very little or bad guidance for next year. So the question is, has the market priced in you know, a good year or a bad year in the future, in next year? And how long will this recession go? You know, we're just entering it now. It's just beginning. We haven't really seen the impacts of it until the support mechanisms get removed. So let's have a look at this. The economic downturn will see dividends slashed for hundreds of thousands of Australians. So in addition to the millions of Australians whose positions have already been made redundant or have lost hours and pay, hundreds of thousands of Australians are facing another reduction in their incomes. They are the Australians who rely on dividend income, the regular payment to shareholders of a company as part of their income. But not this year. And I mean, yeah, some of the dividend yields are going to really take a big hit. They're going to take a big hit. We've just hit profit reporting season, where stock exchange listed companies update investors on how they've been traveling. During these reports, they announce how much investors will receive in dividend payments. So far this month, the vast majority of companies are announcing they're cutting their dividends by half or not paying anything at all. And that's going to be tough for people that have well, built up a strategy of investing in dividend generating companies. I know there's some people that, that even do it in, in a strategy in such a way that companies that they can get a dividend paid out every month from a whole range of different companies. Let me know if you've managed to pull it off here in Australia, because it's something that I think is quite appealing, quite appealing, just to have a steady stream of money coming in. But I think a lot of them are, well, quite heavily, heavily weighted towards the retail or real estate investment trusts, which have a big position in retail, which we see is going to take a hit because, well, consumer spending, consumer confidence is down. I'll bring that up. You can see here, business confidence and condition. Business conditions are up, but confidence is tanking again. So is the day, is the, you know, is the day of the you know, never ending stream of dividends over? On Tuesday, directors from building products manufacturer James Hardy which has already suspended dividends, told investors they want to preserve cash in these uncertain times. And that, that's a, a shame. I know we were negotiating with uh, with James Hardy for some work and all CapEx just put on hold, put on hold, which is a shame. It was interesting seeing their, their facilities they have here, particularly the big grinding machines. Financial services firm Challenger, which also reported earlier this week, decided against paying a final dividend. Sydney Airport also told shareholders there wouldn't be any dividends paid out this calendar year. The Commonwealth Bank is one of the most commonly held stocks by regular investors and self-funded retirees. Yesterday, the ComBank, which had paid a $2 interim dividend early this year, said its final dividend would be $0.98, cents, more than halving shareholders' income. So let's just jump over here. I'll look at uh, CBA share price. And we'll jump over here and you can see here they're sitting at 71.76 their dividend yield is 4.15 and i'm assuming assuming that's updated we'll have to see from the latest dividend let's compare that to let's compare that to let's go nab nab share price we have that there their dividend yield is 6.2 percent and they're not doing as bad but everything from six months back, you know, we're not at February levels, everyone. So if you owned 1,000 CBA shares, 
your payment would fall from $2,000 to $980. That's that's a big chunk. I mean, CBA shares, what that? That's a thousand times, you know, that's 70,000. 70,000 dollars, I'm saying, that you've invested in it. The question self-funded retirees are asking. Some may be asking, why should we care about wealthy investors and self-funded retirees while millions are currently relying on government handouts? And yeah, there will be people that ask those questions. But you don't want self-funded retirees to also be relying on handouts, do you? What you may not know is that hundreds of thousands of Australians, mostly self-funded retirees, rely on dividend income to help pay for everyday living expenses. Exactly. And this is where it's going to manifest in other parts of the economy, everyone. This is why people claiming that, you know, the good times are here, you know, we've, we've hit the, tr the, the trough. I can't see it. I can't see it. The, see, the, we're just starting to see the impacts manifest. Unless, unless next year everything turns around and then all of a sudden James Hardy doubles their dividend, Combank doubles, doubles their dividend to make up for it. Can you see that happening? Is there any precedent for that? Russell Lees represents thousands of ordinary investors across the country in his role as president of the Australian Investors Association. He said he's been inundated with calls from self-funded retirees worrying how they'll pay for food, utility bills and health care, which up until now have been funded through dividend payments. Well, they're going to have to sell some of their capital. That's what happens during tough times. I mean, come on. I know it's ABC. They always always want to paint a particular picture. All these news articles want to paint a particular picture. If you've got 70 grand worth of Combank shares, sell 5 grand worth and use that to buy food for half a year. You know, there you go. Done. Done. They're asking him, what levels, sorry, what level are the cuts going to be? What is the level of income they're going to, that going to come off their portfolio in the next 12 months and what adjustments should they be factoring into this uh, spending pattern over the next 12 to 18 months that's what is the biggest concern if you've got more and more groups of well the economy tightening their belt tightening their belt and these are people hopefully in a position that should have a passive income that are retired that shouldn't shouldn't be too worried but then again returns from bonds returns from bank just cash in the bank is it's nothing so these panicked phone calls speak to the shock that widespread dividend cuts could have on economic growth mr lee's fund manager roger montgomery and amp capital's head of investment strategy shane oliver all confirm dividends received by investors usually exit bank accounts and head into the economy once they're received Self-funded retirees basically use their dividend income like a wage to finance their living costs, Dr. Oliver said. And I found other YouTubers that have um, promoted this strategy, but even here in Australia, even here in Australia, you know, built up a uh, you know, dividend strategy. And it was quite interesting. I mean, you can tell by the backstory of the people where the money came from. You know, it was a marriage breakdown and boom, then I became a genius and invested in these things. <laughs> I'm thinking of doing a series of just trying to build up a portfolio, just one, you know, 1,000 bucks at a time and just seeing how it goes. You know, something that, that a normal person could actually aspire to. So as a result, any dividend income earned by them is spent pretty quickly. And well, there you go. I mean, here, this is the, you know, the good dividend producing real estate investment trust right here. Nice and empty. So income support for investors. Government income support measures are available to ordinary retirees, self-funded retirees, and investors more broadly. Early access to super, the $750 bonus payment, and a reduction in Social Security deeming rates for those with term deposits all help support retirement income, so few investors will be able to cry poor. Now, this I don't understand deeming rates. Can someone explain that to me? Why, why instead of just having people declare what they're earning... So you get an accurate measure of it. You have these deeming rates. Is this to avoid paperwork? Is that the reason behind it? Can someone let me know in the comments? Is it just so the oldies don't need to put up with all the BS? Which I can appreciate. <laughs> so, however, there is no specific government income support for dividend investors. I, could you imagine 
I mean, this is the thing when people are crying for universal basic income. I don't think it'll ever happen here in Australia because people will all get so shitty and tall poppy, tall poppy syndrome. You know, it will kick in and they'll get jealous when they once they find out Gina Reinhardt is getting a UBI. You know, it, it won't happen. Then you have special different classes of UBI. You'll have, you know, all the labor labor voters getting together going, we need a, we need UBI plus for the working class or UBI for this group. It, it will, you can just see how it would completely fall in a heap. It'll be just as complicated as we have now and cost more. Anyway, so here we have companies lifting their dividend and I need a, a shot of And you can see leaving their dividend unchanged. So, given how much dividend income gets pumped into the economy virtually straight away, independent economist Angela Jackson said it says it has the potential to be another big blow to the economic recovery. And we know that companies are going to struggle to make the sort of profits to support the sort of dividend income they delivered in the past, she said. So for those Australians relying on that, there's that's going to be a real cut to the income and it's going to have a significant impact on the economy for the next couple of years. So how big? Online stockbroker Comsec estimates that between late March and May, when companies are paying their half-year or interim dividends, overall around $227.5 billion was paid out to shareholders. Fund manager Roger Montgomery forecasts that roughly a third of all ASX-listed companies won't pay any dividend for the remainder of of 2020. So here's the question. Here's the question to all, all you, you investors out there, to the spruikers, or well not the spruikers, the stock market investors, or the traders, has the market factored that in? Has it factored that in? Let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to see people's, people's take. A simple calculation tells you that means well over $10 billion won't be spent in the economy between now and Christmas, given many companies will still pay a dividend, but it'll be slashed. So a recession spiral, spiral. The hit to dividend income is shocking enough, but its impact on the economy will also be profound. Investors are perfectly entitled to sell their shares to assist with cash flow, but that will only further hurt the companies they are funding, that are funding their dividends. Few are being spared by this health and economic crisis. This income shock is a reminder, though, that every time someone's income vanishes, another Australian's hip pocket also gets hurt. This is precisely why recessions and economic downturns are so darn challenging to escape. This is why they're so desperate to do everything they can, to do everything they can to allow people to escape. And this is why, traditionally, you should have emergency funds, because, well, they can ride you through bad times, and it means you could also have the capacity to take advantages of opportunities when they arise. As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Are you a dividend investor? Is that part of your strategy? And are you noticing the, the hit to your hip pocket? What are your plans to deal with it? Or are you looking at opportunities to maybe increase your pool of companies that you think in the future will pay a good dividend? Or are you waiting or are you put it going all in on Flight Center and Hertz? Let us know your strategies in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin. Buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gore Pass from the Perth Mint. Or support us via PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now. <laughs>